Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, I am going to talk about marker assisted selection or MAS. So let me write marker assisted selection. Now what are markers? I have already talked about it. We have made a separate video on marker. But let me tell you again, marker is a particular type of visual trait, uh, visual, uh, what you can say, trait obviously. It can be of biochemical parameter, or obviously it can be a genetic parameter, so which are representing a particular parameter of a plant. So these are some segments. So gene, uh, it can be a part of gene segment and obviously it's a part of enzyme activity and all these things, which is telling us the expression or behavior of a particular uh, organism right now for example say marker assisted selection is usually done in case of plant the crop development now during this crop development for example i am giving you an example for this whole process what we want to produce we, pr we want to produce some drought tolerant plant some drought tolerant plant species and what we are having we are having a mixture of plants uh, among this mixture of plants so let me draw it again so if I draw a mixture of plants, some of them are these blue plants. Let's say some of them are these green. Actually, never occurs like blue plants, red plants. But in for for the visualization, I'm drawing it. So this uh, red one, and let's say this black one. So we are having four different species of plants there. And naturally, what we want to do using marker-assisted selection, we want to select a particular trait naturally. So we are selecting it uh, by naturally, right? So we, we are not tempering uh, the genetic uh, region of those uh, plants and all these things. We simply allow nature for the selection of a particular trait, right? So that's the important concept. Okay. Now in this case, we are having all these uh, different types of plants. So what we are doing, we are emphasizing, we are increasing this characteristic of drought tolerance, which usually present in the plant. So instead of ins inserting some gene, which is improving the uh, the two ways are there for improving this particular drought tolerant plant. One is the normal plant. You insert the genes which are responsible for increasing the drought tolerance. This is one thing. We can inject it from outside, produce a germplasm, we store it, and then we uh, produce seed and distribute it. it this approach of the study is, uh, is called, uh, what we can say, GMO food, or genetically modified food production. But we don't want this. Uh, we, what we want, we want natural expression. So we take only those plants which are naturally drought tolerant and breed them so that we get drought tolerant variety from all these things right so this is what we are want, uh, want so for that reason what we need to select first we need to select those plants which are uh, drought tolerant in due in some extent okay so let's say among all of them this one is a drought tolerant so this blue blue one are naturally drought tolerant so how to find this answer so so for finding them the which are drought tolerant and which are the marker assisted or associated with this drought tolerance now by looking at it by by looking at the plants for throughout the year we can get some idea that this plant is drought tolerant now after knowing that what we need to characterize where the gene is present and what is the gene which is making these plants a little bit drought tolerant a little bit more drought tolerant uh, over rest of the other right so for that reason we need to extract the dna from those plants and we need to run the gel so let's do this so so what we are doing in this case we are taking uh, the gel and we are running the gel by simply loading it so let's say so let's say four four different wells are there and if we load the gel after loading the gel we get the bands let's say here let's say we get this kind of bands okay let's say so these are the four different whales and we get this kind of band so the whale number one two three four the four whales right and the direction of migration usually here from uh, negative side to positive side Okay, now from this gel, what we get these bands. Now these bands are very important because they are telling us some important features, right? Now we've loaded it, and by looking at the band, what we can tell is that this number one and number three, these two different type of plants, we usually know from here. So say, let's say here, this is uh, uh, number one, and this is say number three. Let's say. So variety. If I tell the variety, then this is the both of them number one variety, and 
this red both of them are number two variety so from these two variety of plants if we load the gel so number three for example let's see and this is for second variety and this is the fourth variety so we are four variety of plants are there among them this blue one which is the number one and this red one is the number three variety we extract uh, we extract all of the dna's and put them but after that this one and three if we uh, look at them carefully what they're providing us they're providing us same type of bands and and from from this first case so for from all of them what we understand that this number one and number three these two varieties are naturally drought tolerance tolerant right so they are naturally drought tolerant right so keep me draw let me draw this part so let's say let me draw here yeah okay let's say this if this is a result among them we naturally know by observing all those plants throughout a year that this type 1 and type 2 or uh, this both of this variety are naturally drought tolerant or due to some uh, genetic expression in their body they are drought tolerant right so now what we want to find we want to find the genes responsible for that for finding the genes responsible for that so our question is what are the genes that are responsible for this drought tolerant nature of these two type of plants over other right now after running the gel what we get some very important information if you analyze all this graph what we can get here let me erase this part okay what we can get from here is that among all this you can see rest of the part are same so let's say all of these three so the bands our bending pattern we get on all, all this bending so we can see this band present in all of them this is also present in all of them so all these bands present in all of them but you can imagine that this one and this one this two dna band is only present in number 1 and number 3 variety they are not present in number 2 and 4 that is very very important now as they are present in only 1 and 3 it is telling us that as this 1 and 3 these two different varieties are drought tolerant so rest of the other bands are same so what is making this one and three different now presence of these two different gene band is telling us that so definitely we can conclude that uh, there are some genes responsible for the drought tolerant must be present in these two dna fragment right so that is our first aim then what we can do we can cut the gel out we can elude and get the dna and after getting the dna we can sequence the dna we can amplify the DNA using polymerase chain reaction or PCR. Then the sequence the DNA to look for which is the exact sequence of DNA which is which is responsible for the drought tolerant nature. Now suppose you get the DNA sequence. Now suppose you get the DNA and after getting the DNA sequence you also uh, analyze after getting the DNA you can also get the idea that this DNA which which is the, what type of protein this DNA is actually coding right and let's say different types of enzymes you find some enzymes which are coded by this this uh, plants now you try to find those enzymes whether those enzymes are present in other varieties or not and you get yes there is no enzyme present in other varieties those two or three enzymes specially are present in this one and three variety then you can conclude that yes the presence of that important gene and the expression of those enzymes are making this number one and three variety as naturally little bit more drought tolerant than rest of the others or even you can get the idea that the, those enzymes present in all spe all the different type of organisms but the expression of those uh, the expression or level of expression of the enzyme is more in plant 1 and 3 so from this you can get an understanding of what are the markers now now what we can get we first what we talk about a physical marker or visual marker by looking at this drought tolerant then we run the gel and what we get now gene marker so he, this is uh, called a gene marker right so once we get this gene marker or genetic marker then we take or we, we select plant based on this genetic marker right so we, we then we go to a field there are a lot of plants out there we select those plants we assess all, all the plants dna so in the whole uh, field we take extract uh, dna from all those plants and we run the gel and we take only those plants which are having these two particular banding pattern 
and we take them bending pattern of particular this layer for example if say suppose this is a very uh, what you can say this is a large dna band so it's let's say 9 950 kb band so we must take those which are having this 950 kb not the other types right or like that okay so after running the gel we'll select only those plants which are having this particular dna in their genome now we, we select them then after selecting them we we'll discard rest of the plants because we don't want them in this experiment then we select those plants let's say from this we'll be selecting the species 3 and we'll be selecting species 1 after selecting these two what we'll be doing we'll be making a breed cross breeding between them so we'll be breeding we can breed between individually 3 and 3 to get higher exam result we can breed between 1 and 1 to get the result or we can also breed between 1 and 3 to get this kind of plant so using this breeding now we can increase the marker so what we are doing now we are selecting plants based on this genetic marker after selecting the plants based on genetic marker we are cross breeding them we are back crossing them so that our desired gene our desired marker placed in those plants throughout the time and we increase the stability of that particular gene of interest into that species by uh, by crossing them again and again and again with same type of uh, same DNA containing species right so that's the basic goal of marker assisted selection so we are selecting a particular trait based on marker first visual then uh, molecular okay so that's it and I hope that's helpful thank you